Hey guys, welcome back to The Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube and in today's video, which is part of a series where we're gonna be talking to pros from the skincare industry, cosmetic chemists, dermatologists, estheticians, so on and so forth. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking to scientist and cosmetic chemist, Tori Moore. I wanted to talk about some of the rumors and myths that we hear about certain ingredients and particularly how they pertain to skin of color. So now realize that this is going to be an ongoing series. So we're going to be hearing from many different people in the industry. But today we're going to be talking with Tori Moore. Find out some things about hydroquinone, kojic acid, denatured alcohol, fragrance. So keep watching. So a couple of things to note before we get into the interview. This video is not sponsored. However, Tori does work for Olay Skincare. So there obviously is gonna be mention of Olay Skincare products and you know things that Olay does and their ethics about certain ingredients and, and so on and so forth. I personally do have a relationship with Olay. I've worked with them for years. They are a brand that I love and in working with them for over the years, I've gotten to know people who work for the brand, which is exactly how I was able to secure this interview with Tori. Tori is actually um, part of a group of uh, black professionals that work at Olay that I got to meet last year at an event um, at Essence Fest. Um, but I was so enamored because I got to meet so many people scientists, marketing people, research and development, people who look like me who were creating some of the products that I like to use. So it was really great. So just wanted to make sure that that was understood because there are going to be a lot of mentions of the brand in the video. Um, but also just keep in mind that this is an ongoing series. So we're going to be hearing from tons of different professionals in the skincare industry. So now without further ado, let's get into this thing. For me, I've always known I wanted to be a chemist since I was five years old. Um, I actually used to uh, go into my mom's bathroom and like just read the back of products and look at different ingredients. And I would head right on into the kitchen <laughs> and try to emulate those products. So it was a lot of ingredients missing from the kitchen when it was time to bake cakes. And, you know, it paid off uh, since I was like super interested in creating. Um, and my parents definitely supported that. Um, but now I am a traditional skincare formulation uh, chemist. Uh, so I'm a part of a team that develops different products um, and different innovations. Um, and recently, I've actually had the opportunity to work on uh, the new Olay Ultra Rich Moisturizer um, and our new Olay Serums, which has okay. been really, really exciting. So, for example, what I do in like a day-to-day -day basis is I work in like um, a lab setting. So I make multiple formulations for consumer testing, um, for technical assessments. And I really get to understand how different ingredients impact product feel, um, absorption of product, um, skin hydration properties of products, and things like that. My background, I have a traditional uh, chemistry degree, um, but other degrees that you can get is like chemical engineering, um, as well as biological science degrees to um, become a cosmetic chemist. How does it affect the product and, and what, like, why is it in there? A lot of people say fragrance serves no function. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so contrary to popular belief, people actually really do like fragrance and skincare. So us at Olay, we really aim to um, offer both fragrance and fragrance-free options for people to, you know, just really have the choice. Um, and sometimes we do intentionally put them in there because we may have ingredients uh, that don't smell that well. Um, so it's really to uh, benefit um, the product use. So when you're using it, we want you to enjoy the product. So if it's an ingredient that doesn't smell that well, then uh, we'll definitely add a low level of ingredient to, you know, make it smell really good. Um, and I also think that fragrance is really only a concern if you have an allergy. So certain people do have fragrance allergies. Um, 
similar to people with peanut allergies. So if you do have the allergies, I definitely would um, avoid it. Or if you are very sensitive to a product with fragrance, uh, I would definitely suggest to pick the fragrance free option. So yeah. Now, alcohol. I don't, I think alcohol is something that people only associate with the drying type of alcohols, but they're different types. So can you talk about? There the are definitely types? different types of alcohols. So it's a whole family of alcohols. Um, they're um, based on uh, the molecular structure of the alcohol. So they have different properties. So when you typically think of alcohol, you may be thinking about ethanol. Um, which is in like different wines and spirits. Um, they definitely have drying properties on your skin. Um, so they're typically not found in um, skincare products with the exceptions of like toners um, or tonics or things like that. Um, so yeah, that's really the difference between alcohols. But we at Olay, we use um, more so fatty alcohols, which is a different type of alcohol. Um, so if you look at the back of your um, skincare product, you may see sterile alcohol or acetyl alcohol or something like that. Um, and these alcohols actually have uh, different emollient properties um, and inclusive properties. And they provide like a softening uh, skincare benefit for your skin. So they're really, really good for you. Um, mm -hmm. And they also help the product uh, to be more creamy or to give it different um, physical property profiles. Denatured alcohol. What, what's denatured alcohol? Should it get the bad rep that, <laughs> that it gets on the internet? <laughs> oh, I would, I would say no. Denatured alcohol is essentially ethanol and it has different additives in it um, to make it like bad tasting or bad smelling to really discourage um, recreational consumption of it. Um, so really it's only used to be like a cleaning agent or fuel additive. So we, we, you typically don't find it in um, skincare products unless it's like a, a toner or a tonic. So we have an Olay Mist. Uh, this, I use it like every day um, and this one doesn't have any alcohols in it. So um, if you don't want any of the um, like ethanols or traditional alcohols on your face, I would definitely just go with a hydrating facial mist or look for those uh, fatty alcohols, the sterile alcohol, the acetyl alcohol, things like that. sodium laurel sulfate. Now there's the sodium laurel sulfate and there's sodium laureth sulfate. And yep. I believe that sodium laurel sulfate is the one that's being demonized on the internet. Can you talk <laughs> to us about that ingredient and why it might be used in certain products? So yeah, so sodium laurel sulfate is, um, it's a very common ingredient in personal care. Um, so it is a surfactant, so you will probably see it most likely in different cleansers. Um, it definitely provides like lather, um, and it's made to trap and remove dirt, um, residue, um, things like that. But it's definitely been used safely for decade, decades. Um, so I think a little bit of the concern comes from people with uh, more sensitive skin because it definitely can be drying or irritating if you have um, sensitive skin. Um, but depending on the level used, it should be perfectly fine. So we definitely test and make sure that our products, if it has SLS in it, that it's perfectly fine for use. Yeah. Um, what is it with silicone? I want to make sure I read the question properly the way the person uh, wrote it. What is it about silicone that suddenly everyone is coming out with silicone free products? <laughs> yeah, so silicones, I actually like silicones, but I think, um, you know, certain ingredients become trendy. Um, sometimes they fall out of favor. Um, and it's not really always based on logic. So silicones have been safely used in skincare um, for decades as well. Um, and a lot of companies use them as fill modifiers because they feel really good. So I'm actually not quite sure why they are becoming unpopular. I think it's more of a, you know, a trend thing. I would say with certain ingredients though, um, if you see them suddenly become like get a bad rep or 
um, things like that. If your skin was fine using it and it's not any data to say otherwise, if it was bad or anything, then I would definitely continue to use it and not worry about it. Um, okay. Cause most of the time it's like, if it works badly for someone, then they'll start pushing that narrative. Yes. But what works bad for someone else may work perfectly fine for you. Yeah. Um, and then another aspect of that is if you have sensitive skin, of course, like just don't go trying like all different type of ingredients um, if you're not used to them. Um, and I like to use like the foundation analogy. So it may take you like months to find the perfect shade, the perfect match, the perfect feel. Um, and once you find that, if the product really, really works for you, I would just say, you know, stick with it. And if you're going to try something, not go like full force with it. Just try a little bit on your arm. Um, and if it works fine on your arm, then maybe try your face and see how that, how that works. Big bad hydroquinone. <laughs> As okay. some people seem to, to think that it is. Now, what are your thoughts on hydroquinone? Um, so my thoughts on hydroquinone, so it is an FDA approved lightning agent, um, mm -hmm. although concentrations above uh, 2% you need a prescription for, um, but Olay, we don't use hydroquinone in our products. Um, and I did hear that it tends to be, um, like it tends to work best on fair skin tones. Um, so if you do have medium to darker skin tones, I would suggest you talk to your dermatologist before using it um, because it could actually worsen your hyperpigmentation. So making sure you are partnering with the right dermatologist to protect your skin, I would definitely say that. Okay. And what are, what are your thoughts on kojic acid? So kojic acid um, is similar to hydroquinone in that it helps to, um, you know, fade dark spots, but it's, it's considered a more natural type of ingredient. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so there's actually not a lot of published research on kojic acid, but it is a um, chemical that's produced by mushrooms, especially ones that help to ferment rice, and it has like a nickname, koji. And it has a lot of antioxidant properties that can affect melanin production. So that's why it's more of a natural uh, version. Mm -hmm. um, and it has been used in a bunch of different skincare products to uh, tap up tackle uh, hyperpigmentation, um, but at Olay, we choose to use uh, vitamin D3 and vitamin C and other things that um, work just as well. Question that someone had about niacinamide is how long should you wait between using um, an active like niacinamide and vitamin C? Which I'm is a little confusing of a question to me because um, they work well together, don't they? Yeah. So, like in this specific uh, example, niacinamide and vitamin C can actually be used at the same time um, mm -hmm. if formulated to be compatible. Uh, so, I think like the only issue would be pH. So, the pH levels can definitely definitely um, be an issue. Um, but we do have Olay products that contain both niacinamide and vitamin C um, to be compatible. So if you want to use our brightening eye cream um, or our tone perfecting serum, uh, those have both and those are perfectly fine to be used together. There are a lot of questions about certain ingredients being okay for melanated skin, AKA skin of color. I guess we can tackle them one by one. So is glycolic acid a bad ingredient for skin of color? I don't think glycolic acid is a bad ingredient for skin of color um, or any alpha hydroxy acid. Um, it, it's not bad for any skin tone. Um, I definitely think that if you do want to try glycolic acid or any AHA, definitely start with a low level um, because you don't want to cause irritation or inflammation, which then leads to hyperpigmentation, which then you're trying to solve for. Um, so I definitely think you should definitely try to avoid any issues 
um, that could potentially cause uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So like I said before, we could be very sensitive um, mm -hmm. to hyperpigmentation issues, inflammation, irritation, and there are um, prescription uh, strength retinoids out there. So for darker skin um, women or men, I would definitely not go and get a prescription for retinol or anything like that um, if you've never used it before and don't know how your skin will react. I would definitely not advise that. Um, but there are over-the-counter um, retinols that can be used, um, and they definitely uh, deliver great texture benefits, um, great radiance benefits. And one that I have here is our Olay <laughs> Retinol 24, which is amazing. Um, it's an over-the-counter retinol that could be used. Um, when we actually did clinically uh, test it, on um, African ancestry skin and those in the clinical had great results and it was well tolerated. So if you are interested in trying a retinol, I would definitely first try an over-the-counter instead of going to a uh, prescription strength uh, retinoic acid. Yeah, because um, I've tried prescription um, <laughs> retinoids and in the, in the past, maybe like 10 years ago, I used it, I had bad acne. And it worked well, it, it was rough, but also I was in my 20s, so I don't think that I was like really concerned about the roughness. I was just really concerned about like, I need this to, to be cured. Um, but in my 30s, I've tried it and it does take a lot of getting used to. And for me, I wanted to try um, Retin-A but <laughs> Retin-A wanted to try me as well. So it can be very irritating. And I will definitely say that um, I stopped doing it for a while because I had camera work that I needed to do. And I did like using something more over the counter for more of like a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. So I think there is a distinction between, you know, the actual coconut oil that people like the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Virgin coconut oil that people are buying in the big tubs from like Trader Joe's or whoever versus when coconut oil is formulated for a product. So can you talk to us about that? And um, coconut oil is considered comedogenic, but mm -hmm. is it comedogenic when it's formulated for a product? So yeah, so when we intentionally, we intentionally choose specific ingredients um, to work on the face, so in general, coconut oil is definitely comedogenic, which means it clogs the pores, but definitely it's less of an issue on body than face, mm -hmm. um, where you have fewer pores. Since we do have a lot more pores on our face, it can be more so clogging to some, but we intentionally use um, um, a type of coconut oil that is okay to be used on the face and will not clog your pores. Chemical sunscreens, they do not release heat that cause hyperpigmentation. Um, and us women of color, it's definitely important for us to be using a sunscreen since it is the first line of defense against uh, UV damage, which is also one of the biggest the biggest causes of hyperpigmentation is UV damage. And you can actually worsen your hyperpigmentation if you don't have a sunscreen. Um, so since chemical sunscreens don't release heat that cause hyperpigmentation, I definitely uh, would still recommend you to use a chemical sunscreen. But if you aren't comfortable using one, you can definitely try a mineral. Um, we also just released a mineral sunscreen. Um, so if you wanna grab that, you can definitely use that one as well. So, I think sometimes that people get confused because you can have actives in, come in many forms. Um, like for instance, you can have a glycolic uh, acid facial wash, you can have glycolic acid in a serum, or you can have it in a moisturizer. Can you talk to, uh, talk to us through the different vehicles that active ingredients, and I use glycolic acid as an example, but any active ingredient um, when it comes in these different vehicles, whether it's a facial wash, um, a serum, moisturizer, 
and how effective that is on the skin. Yeah, so um, glycolic acid is the active ingredient in like a glycolic facial product. So whether it's a wash, whether it's a moisturizer, um, and it really would deliver the same benefit, the same benefit uh, irrespective to the actual form. Um, but the products obviously come in different concentrations. So a lot of times I would expect um, a higher concentration of glycolic acid and maybe a serum or a toner um, than um, in like a moisturizer, which is really uh, made to, to help you gradually over time since it's a mm. daily moisturizer. So yeah. Okay. So it sounds like um, maybe it depends on the person's preference and how they want to kind of ease their way into um, an active. So we'll say, for instance, retinol, um, you know, maybe you may, if you're new to it, maybe you might start out with a retinol moisturizer because it, it, it's not going to have as high of a concentration as, say, a serum. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. This is amazing. I can talk to you about <laughs> ingredients all day met at that um that dinner in uh louisiana for essence fest and i was so proud amazed um to see how many people of color create the products that i love so it, to me representation is everything i hope by seeing this video that we inspire some new generations of black cosmetic chemists so I thank you again so, so much. I really hope so. Did you enjoy this video? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and you turn your notification on so you don't miss any videos from this series or any other of the amazing uploads that I do here on this channel. Stay tuned, follow me on social. The links will be in the description box. Uh, there will also be links where you can follow Tori Moore on social media as well. She's Glam Chemist. I will leave that link in the description box. And I'll see you fine, beautiful, gorgeous folks in my next video. Bye guys.